Is a computer science degree really worth it in 2023? Stick around to find out. So unless you've been living under a rock, I think we're all aware now of the new advancements in AI. Um, we've heard in the news about all of the layoffs that a lot of these big tech companies are doing. And with the just rising cost in general of college degrees, you know, a lot of people are asking themselves, is a computer science degree even really worth it anymore? And I'm here to tell you that I think it is. And I'm gonna go over today some of the reasons why I think it is still worth it and why you should still continue to pursue this. Now, when we're talking about AI, we're not talking about, you know, Skylink from Terminator or something like that. But there have been some pretty neat advancements in AI lately, and it's got a lot of people thinking that AI is gonna replace a lot of software engineering jobs. What would you say you do here? And I'm here to tell you, I don't think that's gonna happen. Even if you're in college right now for computer science, it's not gonna happen in your lifetime. And here's why. People seem to forget that there's already been uh, low-code, no-code solutions that have been out for quite a while. Microsoft has a product called Power Apps that the whole intention behind it was to make it so that uh, someone that doesn't know how to code could create programs for their businesses. And yet software engineers still exist. We will prevail. So even with ChatGPT, uh, GitHub Copilot, all of these new tools that are coming out, um, you still have to have quite a bit of technical competency to kind of get the most out of these tools. Your average run of the mill user is not going to know what to even ask ChatGPT to, to generate some code. Do you know how to use that thing? Yes. And half the time, the code generated by ChatGPT, you know, A, it doesn't even function. There's errors in it. I've seen a lot of times it'll generate function calls that just don't exist for the particular class that you're dealing with. But not only that, but then they're not gonna know how to troubleshoot it, right? If they don't know how to code, they're not gonna know how to troubleshoot a block of code that's given to them if it doesn't work. Your job? find the bug. Sure, you can follow up with ChatGPT and say, hey, this doesn't work, what's going on? But it's just gonna tell you, well, you might check this out, you might check this out, um, maybe this is causing the issue. Again, a typical user is not gonna have the level of competency needed to even generate something out of that. I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's even just for the basic building blocks. And if we're talking more into like a, the specifics of a business, AI is so far off from being to that level, um, it's not even funny. And I wanna give you a perfect example of that. Look at, you know, 20, 25 years ago, if a small business wanted a website designed, they would have to go to a website designer, a developer, to build them a website. Since that time, I mean, we have amazing tools that are out there like Wix, WordPress, there's like Adobe Illustrator to design your websites, yet website developers still exist, right? And there's a reason for that, it's because while these tools can do the basics for you, and while, again, AI may be able to do some of the basic things that a user would need, when you start getting into specific uh, use cases or specific business cases, AI just cannot comprehend or handle that. Um, I mean, at my company, we have tons of internal written software that only my company knows about. AI doesn't even know it exists. If I try to prompt an AI, to integrate you know, a piece of this software that's written specifically for my company with some other third-party software, it's gonna be like, what the heck is that? I don't even know what that program is. What is this? Now, could I feed it the entire, I guess, code base and schema and hope that it figures it out? Yeah, I mean, you maybe could, but even still, there's gonna be specific cases that either nobody has ever done before in the past or because it's such an, an oddball case, AI just isn't gonna know what to do with it. And so I don't think in our lifetime, AI would be able to replace software engineers that work for these companies because there's too many specific cases that it just wouldn't be able to comprehend. Again, you know, there's already low code, no code things that exist out there. And there's tools like Wix and WordPress, but most people still don't know how to use it. They're, they still don't have the level of technical competency to even use the low code, no code tools. And so there's even at that level, there's people that specialize in creating Wix websites for people. There's people that will do WordPress websites for you. 
There's companies that hire developers to use Microsoft Power Apps because they don't have uh, competent enough employees to do it. So even at that level, you still have to have someone that has a logical mindset to use those tools. And so getting your computer science degree, um, you don't just learn how to program for one, it teaches you how to think logically and how to have sort of that engineering mindset that you need in a lot of your day-to-day -day work. I think it's still very crucial to have that skill set under your belt and it's gonna allow you to expand in the future. And so even if in the future, if these, uh, these AIs or the low-code, no-code solutions become more prevalent, you're still gonna have a leg up on most people. You're gonna understand these tools easier. And I think at the end of the day, all it's gonna do is just boost your productivity. You're gonna be able to crank out a lot, uh, a lot more software for your company than we were in the past. I don't think software engineers are gonna be extinct. I think they're gonna be empowered even more. If we look at what we're able to do today compared to 30 years ago, it's gonna be that same kind of trend. The tools that are gonna be available to us to create new things are gonna be amazing. Developers are gonna be able to create really cool software and products for the companies or for uh, their clients freelance or for themselves whatever the case may be something else I wanted to touch on and again I'm sorry if you have a different experience with this don't come for me in the comments everyone's different but in my personal experience I have noticed a trend with these coding boot camps and they're super expensive they're short-term like six months to a year and I've interviewed several people that have went through these coding boot camps, and I gotta be honest, every candidate that I've interviewed has not been the most knowledgeable. I think the problem is they try to cram so much information and offload all of this onto you in such a short time frame, um, your brain just can't fully process and store all of that knowledge. This is just too much to process. So if you've done a coding boot camp and it worked for you, you know, kudos, my hat's off to you. I've seen several YouTubers that have went through a coding boot camp and they've had very successful careers. But in my experience, I still think college is gonna give you a leg up over a boot camp. For one, it's gonna get you noticed more on your resume. And two, I think that the skills and the practicalities that it teaches you makes you interview better. It makes you a more well-rounded person. I think you're gonna have a better success rate of getting a job with a CS degree versus a coding boot camp. To be 100% honest, I think if you're just completely against the college route, I think you're better off to pay for some online courses, take some time to teach yourself things, explore yourself on projects that you might have when it comes to programming, and teach yourself versus going to one of these boot camps. Something else that might help save you some money, and this might be a little controversial, but I personally, I went to a community college for two years before I finished off my bachelor's degree at a, a full university. That's something that can save you a lot of money. There is, in my opinion, there's no need to go to a four-year school for all four years. As long as your credits are going to transfer from that community college, as long as they're going to transfer from that associate's program over to the bachelor's program, I say go to a community college, save yourself a lot of tuition money, especially if you have a community college local where you don't have to pay for room and board. That's going to save you a lot of money over the long run. At the end of the day, on your resume, it's not going to really matter where you went to community college because you're only going to be putting where you got your bachelor's degree from. I will say I've noticed that companies, especially in the last year, year and a half, I have noticed a, a decrease in salaries. A lot of these big Fang, Mang, whatever it's called nowadays. A lot of these big tech companies doing all of these layoffs have kind of saturated the market a little bit. Um, and as a result of that, I have noticed salaries come down a little. You can still find very good paying jobs though. And another, I guess, kind of negative, I've noticed that the, the availability of remote jobs has decreased a lot. Uh, most jobs that I see, especially local to me, they don't even advertise hybrid. They just advertise that you have to come into the office all the time. I don't know if these companies are still offering hybrid programs or what, but uh, the availability of remote jobs has decreased a little bit. So that is something to just keep in mind. But again, it's rare to find a lot of jobs anymore that are fully remote. So just keep that in mind. But overall, the career trajectory, the options that you have, the the opportunities for pay your pay scale, especially after you reach the five year mark of being a software engineer. Computer science and uh, software development engineering 
is one of the best professions that you can get into really. I mean, the possibilities are endless, especially if you're a very, very bright individual, you know, you're, you're very logically minded, you have a great engineering skill set. When you're able to get onto one of these big tech companies, some of the salaries that they offer are um, ridiculous and not to mention the stock options, things like that. But even if you get on at just a normal company, you can still make well into the six figures, have a cushy job that very well respected. You get to work with a lot of peers that kind of share the same mindsets as you do. You get to build, you know, neat tools. You get to design things from scratch. Hopefully, you know, you'll be able to work on a company that allows you to uh, scratch your creative itch by designing UI UX for a lot of the programs you're working on. I wouldn't trade the, the software engineering career path for anything else. I actually started out, I'm a big car guy, as you might have noticed in some of my previous videos. I actually started out going to a trade school and became a painter at a body shop. And I, I enjoyed it, but I think I realized that I liked it a little bit more as a hobby instead of a career. And so I made the shift, went back to school and got my bachelor's in computer science. And um, I'm glad I did. I, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I'm ecstatic with where I am right now in my career and I'm excited about the future and how things are looking up. And I, I seriously have zero fear of AI ever taking my job from me. If anything, like I said, I think AI is just gonna allow me to uh, be more productive in my job. It's gonna allow me to do cooler things than what I thought I even could do. Because when I come across some redundant code or some tedious things that I have to code up, I can have AI just generate all that boilerplate stuff for me. And um, it just makes my life easier. It doesn't, it doesn't replace what I do for the company. So if you're considering going down the computer science track, 100% still recommend it. It's definitely still relevant today. It's not going away anytime soon. Don't let people tell you otherwise. The salary possibilities are great. The benefits are great. It's a, most companies, you have a pretty good work-life balance. If you took anything from this video, I really would appreciate a like and subscribe. I enjoy doing these videos for you guys. I have lots of new content coming your way um, that you don't wanna miss out on. So yeah, if you would, I'd greatly appreciate that like and subscribe. Is computer science still a good degree in 2023? Absolutely. If you're thinking about doing it, go for it. And I'll talk to you guys later.